Hello? Oh, hey, Golsa. Hey, Golsa, I have a question for you. I was just thinking about portmanteaus, and I was wondering if you have any anklets. Do you have an anklet? Hey, Golsa, I see some people spying on me here. I better run. Uh, hope you have a great day in Turkey. Eat some turkey for me. All right, see you later. Hey guys, I caught you spying on me. <clears throat> I was just going for a walk in this beautiful, you know, nice winter sun. And uh, I was thinking about portmanteaus. And <clears throat> so I got lucky. I got a call from my friend Golsa in Turkey. And uh, so I asked her, hey, you know, do you have any anklets? So I do. the reason I asked that question, because I was thinking about portmanteaus. Do you know what a portmanteau is? A portmanteau is a kind of suitcase, like a leather suitcase with, with two compartments. Like you can open it and it's got one side and it's got another side. So it's kind of like two cases in one case. Or you can put some things in this side and some things in that side. Okay, so it's a kind of case, a leather case with two compartments, all right? But it's one case, but two compartments, okay? So the word portmanteau has another meaning as well, <clears throat> okay? And that meaning is a kind of word in English that is made up of two words. Okay, it's one word, but it's got two parts that are made from two different words. So the word anklet is a good example of this, okay? What is an anklet? An anklet is a kind of bracelet that some women wear around their ankle, okay? So uh, think about this word anklet. Ankle and bracelet. It's a combination of both of those words. Okay, now your ankle, what is your ankle? Guys, look at this nice snowy canal here. Man, that is beautiful. <clears throat> some snow, I think it snowed yesterday or it snowed, it snowed recently. You can see some people walked over the canal in the snow there. So your ankle is, a, is the part where your foot connects to your leg. Okay, so look down at your feet. See that place where your foot connects to your leg? That area, that part of your foot is called the ankle. Okay, so uh, a lot of people out here, guys. Oh, hey, there's some people playing hockey over on the canal. Let's go look at some people playing hockey while I keep teaching you about portmanteaus, okay? So portmanteau is a kind of word that, that is made up of uh, two different words. Guys, should I walk across the canal? It's pretty cold. I mean, it, it's been, it, I don't know how thick this ice is, but with this layer of snow, I think it's safe with a, with an extra layer of snow. See, I'm already walking on it. <clears throat> right. So I think this is the first time I've ever walked on this canal, guys. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if the first time I walked on here, the ice broke and I went through the ice. Maybe that wouldn't be funny. Then you wouldn't have anybody to teach you about portmanteaus. Guys, I better leave the canal. It's too much of a risk. You need to learn this. So I can't, I have to protect myself as your teacher, right? Because if you don't learn about portmanteaus, your life is going to be so bad. All right, 
So, I'll protect myself and protect your English learning. All right, guys, so um, a portmanteau is different than uh, a compound noun, a compound word. Right in English, we have many compound words, okay? Like doghouse. Doghouse is one word, okay? But it it's, has two words, dog and house, right? The problem is a portmanteau doesn't use both full words, okay? A portmanteau is a blend of two words and it takes part of each word. So if you think about dog house, dog is word and house is a word. If we put them together, uh, it's one word, but that's not a portmanteau. Okay, that's called a compound word, compound noun. Okay, guys, look at this. They've also like they've made a, they've made like a little maze here in the snow, and over there they're playing. Not very many people, but let's. Let's go over here, guys. I'll show you the ice rink that they made. So a place where people play hockey, the ice part where people play hockey is called a, a rink. You can call it a skating rink or a hockey rink or just a rink. Okay, look at that nice rink. Isn't that awesome? That is cool. All right, guys. So do you understand the difference between a compound noun and a portmanteau. A portmanteau uses part of a word. So anklet, okay, like if we were to make a compound noun out of ankle bracelet, it would be ankle bracelet. We would use the full word. But with, with portmanteaus, we usually just take one syllable from each word. Okay, I'll give you another example, like Bollywood. Bollywood. What is Bollywood? Bollywood is the Indian film industry out of Bombay, India. Okay, so the word Bollywood comes from the word Hollywood. It's Bombay plus Hollywood. Bollywood. Okay, or here's another word uh, Brexit. Remember Brexit happened a few years ago? Brexit, what does that mean? What does it stand for? Britain, exit, Brexit. Although in that, I guess the full word exit is in the word, but uh, that's okay. It's not a compound noun, it's a, it's a portmanteau. Okay, br, we have br from Britain and exit from exit, Brexit. Guys, there's another rink over here. There's two rinks on it. Oh, that's another rink over there. Man, how many rinks are there here, guys? That is cool. You should come out here and play hockey sometime. I don't even have skates anymore. Maybe I should go buy some skates. All right, so do you get this idea? Two words, like, no, one, one word that is made up of parts of two words. So think about that suitcase. Portmanteau is a kind of leather case. <clears throat> where it has two sides, it has two different compartments, okay? So you can put your socks over here, you can put your underwear over there to separate them. And then you can go on a nice trip. You can come to Airdrie, Alberta and play, play some uh, ice hockey on the rinks here. All right, so, so what are some other examples of portmanteaus? Um, Anklet is a perfect example because it's got it uses part of the word ankle, not the full word. Ank let from bracelet. Anklet. Do you have any anklets? I was asking my friend Golsa if she has any anklets. I'm not sure if she has any anklets. But some some women in some cultures wear anklets. Okay? It's just a nice it's like jewelry for your feet. Why do people put jewelry on their feet? <laughs> so you got earrings, you got bracelets on your hand, you got necklace and anklets. It's kind of nice. I don't know. I think that'd look nice, an anklet. 
Wh what about me? Do you think an anklet would look good on me? Better not risk it. I don't wear any jewelry, guys. Look at that, I don't even have pierced ears. I don't wear a necklace. I don't wear... Just look at those birds. I thought they were real birds. They're not real birds, guys. They're fake birds. Look at that. Interesting. So, uh, don't worry. I won't buy any anklets. But let me know if you think I should get my ears pierced or wear a necklace or a nose ring. Ooh, should I get a nose ring, guys? Or should I get some plugs? Okay, if, if, ear, if, you know some men, <clears throat> it's very common for men in the West, Western world to not have earrings, but have plugs. Those are the holes in your earlobes, right? This is called your earlobe. And there's like a hole in the earlobe. It's like stretched. Why did people do this kind of stuff? Do they just wake up one morning and say, you know what? Today I want to put big holes in my ears. And and so the, the thing, the ring that you put into the earlobe is called a plug, I think. I don't know much about that culture. I don't have any tattoos, guys. I don't have any piercings. I don't have any jewelry. I'm just a simple guy teaching you English. All right, so uh, let me know, do you have plugs or do you have some kind of jewelry? Um, so anklet is a good example. Now I have a list on my phone of a whole bunch of these uh, portmanteaus, okay? So I'm just gonna pull out my phone and we're gonna go through some of these examples for you, okay? Just loading up my iPhone here. Oh, another one, actually, that I just think can think uh, uh, off the top of my head is breathalyzer. Breathalyzer. Do you know what that is? Okay, a breathalyzer is um, it's a it's a device that the police use to see if you've been drinking too much. Okay, so they test your blood alcohol level through your breath. All right, so um, uh, like they if if they stop you, they might say blow into this breathalyzer. So it's a thing. It's a device you have to blow into, and the device will say what your out blood alcohol level is. And in in most countries, they have laws that you cannot drive if your blood alcohol level is a certain... I, I can't remember what it is here in Al Alberta. I think it's 0.05%. 0 0 0.05. That's somehow that's ringing a bell. I think it used to be 0 0.08. But then they, they changed it. They lowered it to 0 0.05, I think. So, I don't know. Um, but uh, <laughs> it was kind of funny. A few months ago, uh, I went out with a friend for Indian food. My friend Neville. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> we had, we ate Indian food and then we wanted to keep talking. The, the restaurant was closing and so we needed to leave the restaurant. So we went to Tim Hortons to grab uh, some drinks or donuts or something. And uh, on the way, so he was following me. It was raining that evening, that night. I don't know, this was probably around 10 o'clock. I think it was 10 o'clock when the restaurant closed. So we were going to Tim Hortons. We were driving, it was raining, and there was a part of the road that had some construction. There were some pylons. You know those orange things on the road are called pylons. And uh, it was raining and it was kind of hard to see where the road actually went. But I, I anyway, I got, I went there, I, I, I went through this, this, these pylons and then I got to Tim Hortons. But uh, <clears throat> my friend, now I can't remember if my friend Neville was in front of me or behind me, but anyway, he he got he got stopped by the police because they thought he had been drinking because he was kind of he wasn't sure where the road went it was kind of hard to see right because it was raining all the lights reflecting and these pylons and so he kind of slowed down he slowed down and was trying to see how where to go the cop cop means police right the cop thought he 
maybe had been drinking, right? So he stopped him and he made him do a breathalyzer. <laughs> so then I went, I got to Tim Hortons and I was wondering, where is, where is Neville? And uh, so Neville showed up and he said he had to blow into a breathalyzer. And, uh, you know, fortunately, he, I don't think he had been drinking. I, I had, I think I had been drinking. So I got lucky. <laughs> I got lucky. I got, uh, I escaped. <laughs> I escaped the policeman's trap. But I think that the reason the police stopped him was because he slowed down pretty quick because he wasn't quite sure where the road went. Sometimes in construction zones where they have these pylons and if it's raining and the lights are kind of like, you know, reflecting off everywhere, it's kind of confusing, right? So it makes sense to slow down. Um, I don't know why the police stopped him and not me. Anyway, guys, so um, <clears throat> there's a little story for you about me and my friend Neville. Um, breathalyzer, that's a, a portmanteau, okay? Breath analyzer, okay? It's one word, but it's made up of two parts, okay? Breath analyzer, okay? So we don't say breath analyzer. This device is called a breathalyzer. A breathalyzer. Have you ever blown into a breathalyzer? I've gotten lucky my whole life. I've never been stopped for the police for, for that reason. Um, you know, I've never had to blow into a breathalyzer. I don't know what it's like. I don't know. I've never had that experience to blow into a breathalyzer. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah. So breath, it, it stands for breath analyzer. But it's, well, it doesn't stand for, usually we use stand for me, to mean like an acronym, you know, like uh, TGIF. What does that stand for? Uh, thank God it's Friday, right? So usually with an acronym, we would say, what does that stand for? With a, with a portmanteau, we don't say, what does that stand for? But you could say that, it's fine. So, you know, I could say breathalyzer stands for breath analyzer but we don't use the full words remember these are just parts breath i guess that is the full word <clears throat> but the second word is just lizer breathalyzer not breath analyzer but that's what it means breath analyzer it analyzes your breath to see how much alcohol is in your body right <clears throat> all right guys let me go through this list here and I'll tell you some uh, some words. Okay, here's another one. Bromance. Bromance. <laughs> Have you heard that word before? Bromance is a, is a good good friendship between two men. Right? Two males. Uh, it's called a bromance. A platonic relationship. Okay. Platonic means um, there's no romance. No, no, there's no romance. Okay. It's just platonic. It's like friends, right? So I could say with, with my friend Neville, you know, we have a bromance, right? It just means that we're friends, two men who are friends, you know, it's, you know how girls, you know how girls use the word girlfriend? If they say, oh, I'm going out with my girlfriends, they can say that. But for men, they don't say I'm going out with my boyfriends, right? Guys don't say that. So it's just funny how girls can call their women friends, their girlfriends, when there's no, when that, that's also platonic. Okay, platonic means there's no, no romance, no feelings of attraction. It's just friendship. Okay, so um, girls who call their girlfriends, girlfriends, um, men don't do that. Men don't call their, they don't say I'm going out with my boyfriends tonight. I don't know, they just say I'm going out with my friends tonight, but uh, that friendship can be described as a bromance. A bromance, all right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, that's that. And so it, it, it comes from B for, from, for brothers, bro, brother. Sometimes men, you know, call them, call their friends their brother. Hey, brother, you know, so bro, Mance, Mance from Romance, so B, Romance, I don't know. Anyway, guys, that's one example. Let me think, let me tell you another example. <clears throat> uh, brunch, brunch. Hey, do you like to eat brunch? I love eating brunch. I'm sure Goal Sign Turkey loves eating brunch. 
brunch. Brunch is a combination of lunch and breakfast, okay? It's a, it's basically means a late breakfast. A late breakfast that you eat around maybe 10 a.m., 10 to, 10 to 12, probably in that area. That's called brunch. If it's before 10 a.m., you'd call that breakfast. You just say, I'm having a big breakfast. Because brunch is a big meal, okay? Usually, usually like, brunch replaces both of those meals, br breakfast and lunch. So if you eat brunch, that covers two meals. It, it, two meals. But hey, it's two words. One word covers two meals. <laughs> it makes two meals into one meal. Just like the word brunch takes two words and makes them into one word. Okay, brunch. So if you eat brunch, then you don't eat until supper. Okay, so you only eat two meals a day then if you eat brunch. Um, and brunch here in our culture is usually just breakfast food. It's breakfast food, but it's a big breakfast. You know, it's a big late breakfast. So a brunch wouldn't be like just eggs and toast. No, brunch has, it has to do with the timing, but it also has to do with the size of the meal. Okay, so for brunch, you might have, you might have bacon, sausages, hash browns, pancakes, fruit, you know, coffee, tea, you, you got all that stuff. It's a big meal, okay? A big, big breakfast that's called brunch. Big and late. Do you love brunch? I love brunch. <laughs> brunch is a great meal. Whoever came up with that, Portmanteau was a genius. Brunch. Now, I've also heard the word lupper to, to mean the combination between lunch and supper. Supper is the evening meal, okay? A lot of people say dinner. In Canada, a lot of people call the evening meal supper. Okay, so lupper. Lupper would be a combination of lunch and supper. So maybe you'd eat lupper around, I don't know, 3 p.m. Be kind of weird. Most people don't eat lupper, but a lot of people like brunch. So brunch is the is a good one. Brunch is the common one, the famous meal. Uh, okay, so what else do we have? Okay, so again, brunch is a combination of brr from breakfast and unch from lunch. Br unch brunch. All right, uh, what else do we have? Oh, carjack, okay. If your car gets stolen, then your car got carjacked. Okay, so some people, are very bad people, car thieves, they're called carjacker, you can call them carjackers. Okay, so what is this? This is a port portmanteau. So what are the two words? Car, meaning car, and jack from hijack. Okay, so what does a what does the word hijack mean? Mean hijack means to take over a plane. Like you know, hijackers, they take over a plane, and they fly the plane. It's not their plane, but they take it by force. They're called hijackers. Hijackers, okay? So carjackers. Carjackers are people who steal cars. It's not good, guys. Have you ever jacked a car? I've never jacked a car or a plane. Thank goodness, and I, I never intend to hijack a plane or carjack a car. Right. So, uh, what other word here? Let me think. Uh, email. <laughs> email, guys. So, email means, what does it mean? Let's see, this word is so common, we don't think about it as a portmanteau. That's the thing, portmanteaus are so common that we don't think of them as two different words. I mean, we don't think of them as a combination of two words. They're just one, it's one idea, one thing, like brunch. It's one thing, we don't think about where it came from. Uh, but, uh, so with email, it stands for electronic mail. Electronic mail. It's not real mail, not like snail mail. Okay, if you actually write someone a letter with your hand, and you send them that letter in the mail, that's called snail mail because it goes slow, all right? It's two words, 
It's not, not a portmanteau. I don't think it's not a compound noun. It's two separate words, snail, male. But if they were put together, then it would be a comp. I guess it could be a compound noun, snail, male. I think it's usually written as two separate words. Sometimes it's hard to know, right? Like um, dog house, that's one word. Firefighter is one word, okay? Firefighter, is firefighter, uh, is that a portmanteau? No, it's not, because it's, it uses the full words. Fire, fighter. If it were like fire eater, fire eater, then it, well, I guess then it would be a, a portmanteau. <clears throat> because you remember, both words cannot be full. When we're, when we're talking about portmanteaus, both words cannot be full words. If they're full words, it's a compound noun. But if one of the words or both of the words are somehow shortened uh, and squashed, like squashed together, then uh, it's, uh, it's a portmanteau. Okay, so email, <clears throat> electronic mail. Did you know that? That's what email, email means. Okay, uh, let me look up my list here. <clears throat> Fortnite. Okay, a fortnight is a period of time. It is, it is 14 days. Well, actually 14 nights, right? So if a two, two weeks, if you want to describe a two week period, you can call it a fortnight. Okay, that means 14 nights. It's a, it's a portmanteau, okay? Fortnight, it's short for, it's like, it's a combination of 14 nights, fortnight, right? So that's, uh, that's a, it's a kind of an old fashioned word. We don't use that word too often in English, but you could use it. You know, you could say, I'm leaving for the Bahamas in a fortnight. Man, I wish I were leaving for the Bahamas in a fortnight. How long was your vacation? It was a fortnight. It means two weeks. Okay, a fortnight is two weeks. <clears throat> Where are you going to be in a fortnight? I wish I could leave for the Bahamas in a fortnight, guys. Uh, all right, what are the last word? Oh, three more words. Hangry. <laughs> That's a good word. Hangry. Have you ever heard that? That's a, a portmanteau. See, a lot of these portmanteaus are playful. They're kind of where you're kind of playing around with the language, guys. You, you're kind of making a new word. You're taking two words, existing words, and you're kind of making a new word. It's kind of a playful thing, right? So instead of saying late breakfast, you say brunch. You're kind of having fun with the language, right? Whoever made that term, they were probably a fun person. They just kind of tried to play around with the words, right? Another word is hangry, okay? Hangry is, means angry, but when you're hungry, okay? It's a combination of hungry and angry <laughs> because a lot of people get angry when they're hungry, right? So <laughs> you could say, I'm hangry. That means you're angry because you're hungry, right? So, ha, uh, hangry. You're taking the H from hungry and you're adding it to angry. Hangry, right? Uh, guys, are you hangry? Do you ever get hangry? Um, la uh, one of the second last one here <clears throat> is smog. Okay, what does smog mean? Smog, well, Fog, do you know what fog is? Fog is a natural occurrence where uh, it's like a cloud on the ground level. So imagine, you know sometimes when you look, it's really foggy outside and uh, you can't see very far. You can't see and some cars, some cars have fog lights. They're very low to the ground. <clears throat> They're low to the ground so that they can kind of cut through the fog. Um, maybe your car has fog lights. So fog, that's what fog is. <clears throat> it's just a cloud on the ground, so you can't see because it's too foggy. Um, and there's another, there's another word called smog. Now smog is a portmanteau, which is a combination of smoke and fog. Smog. Now in smog, there actually is no fog in smog. Smog means means that you can't see 
very far because of because of air pollution not because of natural you know like fog is a good thing fog is kind of cool guys have you ever been in fog where suddenly it's like you're in the middle of a cloud and the, the air is like really fresh it's maybe cold and it's thick and it's like wow i'm breathing in a cloud here because a cloud is just water vapor right so it's kind of cool i've been in 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 fog before it's cool um <clears throat> but smog is a bad thing okay smog means smoke and other air air pollution from vehicles and from just everything that's over like a city you know sometimes if you look at oh, in some cities have really bad smog you look you look out you can't even see the sun or you can't see the you can't see anything quite because it's not it's not fog it's smog right it's bad so you don't want to breathe in all that air pollution so that's that's a the word smog is a portmanteau combining the word smoke and fog smog all right all right guys what's the last one last one on our list here is spork <laughs> So again, this is a good way to, this is a good reminder about the kind of the, the playful aspect of this, of, of these words, okay? A spork is a combination of a, of a spoon and a fork, all right? So have you ever seen sporks before? <laughs> sporks are weird. It's like a spoon with like a few little things at the end, like a fork. Okay, so most sporks I think are plastic. Yeah, I don't know, maybe if you go to, if you go to Costco or you go to some restaurant, some fast food restaurant, maybe they, they might give you a spork. I don't know, I don't know what food, like maybe if you're eating like a potato salad or a, uh, I don't know what, but anyway, I've seen sporks. I don't know what, I don't know who makes them or why they make sporks. But it's like, it's like it, com it combines like two things, right? Imagine if you're eating soup, if you want to eat soup and you want to eat a salad. Well, you, like you need the fork part to stab the pieces of the salad, but you need the spoon part to eat your soup. So instead of using two different utensils, you're, you're only eating, you're using one, right? You're one thing. So you just, maybe the company wants to save money. So they'll just give you one spork instead of a spoon and a fork, right? So sp, spork, sp comes from spoon and ork from fork, spork. <laughs> Have you ever used a spork before? <laughs> Guys, uh, this world is crazy. I don't know whoever came up with that idea of a, a spork. Some people are behind me, guys. Well, anyway, I'm done. That's it for your portmanteaus, guys. Hope you're doing great, especially if you're in Turkey. To all my Turkish subscribers, I love you so much. And uh, remember to eat some turkey for me today. So, guys, with that, I love you so much. And uh, hope you're having a great day. Stay safe, stay healthy and happy. And as always, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.